Welcome to the PLT podcast, Eden Hobbs, everybody! (laughs) Babes! Welcome to the PLT podcast. Thank you for having me. I am absolutely brilliant. So excited to be here. How are you doing? I'm really well, thank you. I've been so excited for today and everyone, as you can tell by that applause, is really excited as well. Oh, I'm so excited. Definitely got some Eden Halves fans in the room right now. Yeah, Amy's putting the peace sign up. Yes, <laughs> You're acting cool there, aren't you? Like, yeah, I'm just a chill fan. I'm a chill fan. I'm the cool I love now. them. They're the best and they play it cool. And they're like, yeah, I know who you are. But like... <laughs> that's the kind of fans that's the kind of fan we like okay well thank you so so much for joining us honestly we've been so excited for today and honestly it feels a bit weird i know we were saying off air because last week i was sat here doing a tiktok live which eden i don't know whether you're familiar but i'm not the biggest person at tiktok i'm not very good at it you smash I normally, it i normally just go on to post the podcast stuff but the guys <laughs> at work were like oh can you come in and talk about the podcast and all this and i thought yeah all right i'll give it a go yeah and up pops Eden Halves chatting to me. And I'm like, guys, who do we want to see on the PLT podcast? And everyone's going, Eden Halves, Eden Halves, Eden Halves. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, should we make this happen? And look, here we are. Here right we are. Now. Manifestation gets this you places. This is manifestation, this literally. Is. Literally. Have you manifested this yourself? Babe, I fucking manifested my life. Stop. Oh I don't God, know I what's literally... going on, but <laughs> oh, I'm here for it, to be honest. <laughs> I could literally sit and talk to you all about manifestation. But first of all, I've got to talk about your TikTok because I know that all your fans and everybody even in the room right now is going to be wanting to know all of your secrets and kind of how you kind of started. So Just I that. know that you started your TikTok in 2019. Yes. Wow. Okay. So not that long ago. Tell us about like kind of when you first started and what your plan was with TikTok. Did you have a plan? Was it just fun? Tell me all about it. So basically me and my best friend were on a train coming back from a Jack Whitehall concert. Nice. Yeah, that's the best. It's the best. Um, And we thought, yeah, that was really funny. And my best mate was like, oh, do you know what TikTok is? I was like, no. She was like, it's for kids. But like, just like, look, like, should we do this sound? We were on the train home and we were like, should we do that sound? And then we were like, so like we lip synced that sound and we made like, uh, she had her own account anyways. So then I was like, okay, let's do the Mission Impossible sound as well. So then we were like, we had these, we were like this rolling over the train, terrible, the worst video you have ever seen. And I thought, that's fucking brilliant. That, Wait. brilliant. <laughs> and then I thought, Soph was like, oh yeah, her name's Soph. She was like, oh yeah, it's just like fun, isn't it? And I went home and I was like, got on the app store. I was like, I don't think this is a joke anymore. I was like, <laughs> I was like, this is brilliant. And I was just like doing all this acting, watching it back. I was like, post that. It was like, brilliant. So it all started with like, I love lip syncing. I am a pr- that's I don't big myself up ever. But you li- are a pro. Lip syncing. You are. I'm there for it. Always. And transitions. Wait, I was watching trans- a transition video of yours the other day and I thought, how the F does she do that? Did you see Will Smith posted it on his Instagram? That's my biggest flex in life. Go that on. is your biggest flex, babe. You are, honestly, you're gonna have to send me that afterwards. I need to see, I, I, w- sh- I hope we've got it. screenshots. But actually, do you know what? I kind of want to see your first TikTok. I know that this, no! I actually thought, I thought about this today. No, I fully wish we could do it, but I thought oh, thank God. Oh, it's thank gonna God. take, well, I mean, if, you, if you've got access to it, I thought it would take forever to scroll down to your first TikTok, wouldn't it? I dread to think what it was, to be honest. I, thinking well, about it now, I'm like, what on earth was it? It must have been super would... cringy. Well, it was the, it was the one on the train. It was the one on the train. No, because that was on like a joint account. That was on Soph's oh, account. She deleted that. That was on her account. Yeah, okay, I'd probably so be able you... to find it if I really tried. But... So you don't remember your first TikTok? No, not my first ever one. Right, well, if it comes back to you through the recording, you just let me know, Eden, okay? Because oh I want to know. I think it was something to I'm do with Jack it. Whitehall's dad. Jack Whitehall's dad. Da- Jax Whitehall's dad is a babe. He's an actual babe. I love him. I met him at the O2 before Jax concert. He was like, he's very funny. You need no! To- <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Did you watch the show? Did you watch that show when the when he took him? What was that show when Jack took him away? Like everywhere, Travels with like, my father. Travels with my father. Honest to God, Brilliant. crying the whole way through. I we could definitely it. talk about Jack Whitehall for, um, you know, a little bit longer. But more him. about you. Back to you and back to you kind of TikTok. So you started off with a video you can't remember. It must yep. have been really memorable. <laughs> but... When did it kind of all start to take off? Because obviously right now you've got a humongous following on the channel. So when did it all really start to take off for you? That's the thing. Everyone says to me like, what's your video that blew that blew you up? Mm. And it's it was never like that for me. And I think that's why my following is so loyal because it has been quite slow growing. And like, mm. so like the, when it started to like boom followers wise was back in November, 2020, when I started Eat With Me. 
Right. That's when it started to really boom, like hundred thousand a week. I was like, whoa, like what is going wow. on? That's like so like November twenty twenty was when it all began, basically. Wow. Yeah. And okay, so you're twenty three and you've got two point three million followers. It quite right works now. out, doesn't it? So maybe when I turn twenty four it'll go to I know. I was actually thinking that last night. I was thinking, wow, yeah, that's quite um, a coincidence there. I like it. Yeah, I've got OCD, so I'm hoping that's what happens. So no, no <laughs> one follow me, yes, please. Yes, guys, right, okay. It needs to get to 2.4 by the time you turn 24. It's, it's going to happen. I mean, you'll probably smash above that. But it must seem crazy right now from when you started the channel back in 2019, making these kind of fun videos to kind of where you are now to look at your it's growth and your journey. Unreal. It's the best thing to ever, ever, ever happen to me. And I'm so grateful for all of it. It's just mind-blowing like it's weird for me because like i'll be sat in bed sucking my thumb watching a netflix series then i turn on my phone i'm like two thousand people are watching i'm like hi everyone like, <laughs> do you know what i mean like everyone says like oh don't change when you get followers that doesn't happen mm. like you, mm. it, you're still exactly the same person but like you can't go to asda and i'm just this, like this is the thing with tiktok i feel like it's just like you can literally blow up on that channel. I think obviously yeah. you have to have great content, which you mm. do, but it's kind of like overnight fame. It literally, yeah. like you just grow. I know that you go and meet some of your fans. I know that you've done that in the past and, and recently. And I just, I, I think it must be so hard to even imagine that you were going to be at that, at that place when you first started that doing TikTok. I had no idea. It's like the dream, isn't it? Like mm. you're sat in bed, you're like, oh, I'd love that. And now it's just like, when you go out, you're like, in boots bloody buying femme fresh or something <laughs> and someone's like love you and you're like can i have a picture yeah, like, let me yeah. just put the femme oh fresh my down. god before Thanks, i've been holding femme fresh in a modium because I, <laughs> I just had anxiety and I, I was picking up all this stuff i was like why am i holding a modium and i like gave it all to my sister and i was like yeah <laughs> Wait, just for the sake of the sound guy, Pete, who can't hear you, he can only hear me. So I feel really sorry for him not being able to hear oh, you. But Pete. she was in a store with Femme Fresh and Imodian in both <laughs> hands and a fan wanted a picture. Now that... Don't get, don't get them mixed up. Yeah, don't get them mixed up. That is classic. That is classic. But that's just I me. Mean, keeping it real, you know? Always. Keeping it real, honey. IBS. <laughs> <laughs> But on, honestly, Eden, you've got so many talents. You said before that, you know, your lip syncing is the one. I've mm. seen it. I've, I've witnessed it myself. It definitely is. It's my is. favourite. I your transitions it. are crazy. Wait, let's just talk about your acting for a minute because your acting skills are pretty up there too. I know. Well, it's like because I, I, before all of this happened, I was in a drama group with... So my mum is the director of a drama group. I've been wondering yeah, this. and I did... Tell um, me. I did drama in South London near Croydon. We were in a little drama group. So since I was like 14, wow. I've acted in plays and stuff so quite good at remembering lines and acting and audiences and chatting so I'm oh my god it all makes sense it yeah. all makes sense why you're so good at what you do then oh stop. I love that so what do you think you would be doing right now because I know that TikTok is your full-time or been you know influenced with Instagram and everything is your full-time job yeah so what do you what do you think you would be doing if TikTok didn't exist or this never kind of happened serving life in jail for stalking my ex you? Yep, serving life in jail for stalking your ex. I, I'd probably no, be there with you, neighbour. <laughs> no, I, do you know what? I really wanted to be a zookeeper. I always wanted no. to be, yeah. I, I used to go to the zoo with my ex and we used to watch these like talks. And you know when they like talk and they throw a fish to the seal and the, I just thought, I want to do that. <laughs> I don't really know what's happened, but I've ended up here. I'm not complaining. <laughs> No, um, what an amazing, what an amazing place to be yeah. in, position to be in. Yeah, but I always wanted to be a zookeeper or a wow. teacher. What, yeah, what? Oh, or a teacher? That's they're quite two big careers. There. What's I don't want to teach though. I just want to like rub a pen in my hands and like have loads of jewelry. And you know, like teachers are really smell ASMR. Smell of black coffee. Like yeah. your breath would smell of yeah, black coffee. I, I imagine I every single teacher smells of black coffee. Oh, that's all I remember from school. Yes. <laughs> What's your favorite? <laughs> What's your favorite animal? If you're a zookeeper, what would be your favorite animal to look after? Um, it's just quite cool to say the tigers, isn't it? Do you know what? Like, I it feel like I, I ask these kind of questions because you get to know what kind of person you are. I would, mine would be tigers too. It's it just has to be, cat. doesn't it? Like, imagine being like, yeah, I, w I watch the meerkats. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, do you know what I mean? You know. <laughs> okay, well, tell me, let's go back to Eat With Eden. So, obviously, you're kind of known for Eat With Eden. Now, yes. I, I want to hear the song. Can we do the song? Y'all know what time it is. It's time to eat with Eden. Cha, cha, cha. 
Yes! <laughs> oh my God, I just saw it live. You know, I love these moments. I absolutely love these moments. But Eden, you've really, really blown up for this. Like, tell us a little bit about it. For anyone who's not seen it, I mean, I yeah. don't know where they've been. They've obviously not been watching TV, the news, TikTok. <laughs> God knows where they've been. But tell us a little bit about it if people haven't seen your videos. So I was doing videos that were like temporary kind of like fun and all of this. But I sat down with my parents one day and I said like, I want to do something that sticks with people. Like mm. this app could be taken away in a heartbeat. I want to do something where someone's like, she changed my life. That's mm. my main thing. And I thought like, what can I do? And mum said, Edie, you need to be really careful getting into um, do something for mental health because lots of people are offended. You can say a lot of stuff wrong, which I always do. Mm. Um, and I was like, I saw loads of people doing like eat with me videos and I was like, love that. I was like, but they were all American. And I messaged my American friend right. that I saw that did it. I said, like, could I do that? She was like, like, I didn't make the trend. You do what you want, girl. Like, you do you. <laughs> I was like, okay. So then I did my first ever video. I was sat eating Marmite toast. And within like 20 minutes, it was on 100,000 views. And I was like, wow. and there was loads of people saying, this has really helped me. Um, I really, I really love watching this. You really helped me. And now like the feedback is astronomical. And I'm just so happy that I had that sit down with my parents and I mm. thought, I want to do something. Because everyone's like, so about their image and all of mm. this and that. And I wanted, I sit down with no makeup. They all see me. And I just like, if I can eat in a waggers. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, And that's what they love to see. <laughs> Definitely like, a wagon, a wagon, wagon mama. Yeah. Oh my God. I did, I did an advert with them the other day. They're giving I me some. I saw it. Loved it. What, they, a fun, what a good way to do it. They said to me, would you like Get some vouchers? I was like, would I like some vouchers? <laughs> I'd like shares in the store, to be honest. Have my videos, hon? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So I'm going to get that after this, actually. I can't yeah, wait. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Um, but yeah, so every evening between 6.30 and 8, I don't like to give a set time because sometimes I'm not Sometimes I'm not hungry and that is a mm. massive problem because mm. I don't want to let anyone down. It's a lot of pressure. So yeah, I, I always give the time frame between 6.30 and 8 because I'll definitely put something out, whether it's like have a cup of tea with me or something. I'll always make sure mm. I'm there for them and they all know that as well. So... Wow. Yeah, it's just the best in the world. And parents love it as well. <laughs> parents always stop me in the street and they're so like grateful and they give me a hug and they're like, I don't know how, but you make my kid eat. Oh my word. Like honestly, to, to think, to think like, I think first of all, it's actually really, really inspirational that you've sat, when you've began to build a platform thought, okay, what can I do for good? Because yeah, yeah you're right. Not many people do that. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. You know, it's just not always in the forefront of everyone's minds, but I think yeah. it's so great that you've actually sat there and thought, okay, what can I do? Mm -hmm. And then to take this thing that you've just said, you know, people in America were kind of doing and make it blow up as much as it have and actually have an impact on people's lives is... Like beyond even wild, it's like, you know, imagination, really. It's absolutely manic. And like, it's so difficult because I do it on TikTok and TikTok sometimes mm. can be a bit arsy and they'll ban you and they'll stop you posting for a few days or yeah. something. So for me, I have all these parents in my inbox at 6.30 if I'm banned. Where's the eat with me? Where's the eat with me? Where's the eat with me? Wow. And I'm like, please just rewatch my old ones. But it's like a series. Like if you're fucking mm. watching a series, you don't want to rewatch an episode do you know what I mean for them it's a new thing every day so mm. if I am banned or something it's really stressful so I'll always try and do it on Instagram or something I, I never want to leave them without it because mm. they need that security and that's why I did it in the lockdown because none of us were secure about anything and that's why they knew they always because it was quite boring lockdown so mm. I wanted them to always gotcha. know yeah they've I've got something to do this evening I'm gonna watch Eden's eat with me and yeah it's amazing to know that you're that kind of person that people can go and and look to for, you know, I'm sure every viewer takes something different away from your videos, mm. but what an amazing thought to think you're actually impacting people's lives, like I, I say. And I think, you know, through lockdown, you said you started it in November. So did you really start to see an increase when lockdown really hit? Yeah. In and your it's, views and your engagement? It's manic because <laughs> you never know why someone's stopping you. So I went to, mm. I went to Thought Park and I got stopped so many times, but it's like, oh, you're the girl that does transitions. You're the girl that does the eat with me videos. Oh, you're the oh one that does word. this. You do really good lip syncing. And I'm like, what What in the hell is going on? Like, it's all different. So like someone's crying. Someone's trying to film wow. me, getting me to do a transition. I'm like, whoa. Like, so it's manic that they all know me from so many like different yeah. things. But um, yeah, lockdown was when it really blew up and people really like relied on me. And it's a lot of pressure, but mm. it's, I wouldn't change them for the world. Because this, this is the thing, like, you actually post a lot of content daily. Like, how do you even find the time to create so much content? 
Not even just on TikTok, on Instagram as well. Like from, I'm, I'm sure through TikTok, kind of your Instagram is also blown up. Yeah. Which is so, mad. I remember joining TikTok and I had like a thousand followers on Instagram and I was like, oh, like I don't really care about Instagram. Like TikTok's like my main thing. And now it's like 161,000. I'm like, where did you all come from? Like, um, it's crazy. That's what I mean. The growth is just like absolutely astronomical. So mm. how do you keep up with creating all these different content? I know you've got your set kind of thing. So like you eat with Eden, but then you're yeah. still posting. How many, how many videos do you post a day actually? On average, I'll try and do at least eight if I'm not busy. Wow. If I'm not busy. But I, I think it stems. I used to live in the countryside mm. and I had the best imagination. So, and I, I just, I'm always, my mind's going 100 miles an hour. Unless I'm yeah, chilled yeah, yeah. watching Netflix, my mind is going a million miles an hour. And I'm thinking like, <laughs> this would be a really funny story to tell. I should do this. Let's do this makeup look. Let's do this transition. Let's make up a new transition. And, and if I don't unload it all and just get it mm. all out, then it will just mm. take up my mind. I won't be able to sleep. So yeah, I, I, I love it. It's my, it's my job. So like everyone's like, oh, like it must be so easy for you just to post videos and then go about your day. And I'm like, oh no, do you no, know no, what no, I mean? I like, everyone, yeah, yeah, I definitely don't think it's easy. That's what I'm getting at. Like, I don't I know. know how, and I, and I can completely, you know, understand how you're saying you feel it's a pressure to yeah. post. I know obviously you love doing it, but to post, especially your Eat With Eden, when people mm. are literally waiting for that content yeah. and asking you where it is. It's the worst. When they, when I get those messages of like, where's Eat With Eden? Sometimes I do just think, like, I just want to be like, oh, shut up. Like, my dinner's but, in the oven, love. Yeah. You just leave me alone. I'm like, my fucking driver's on the way. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I can't God, say delivery is on its way, hon. Oh, my gosh. And I'm just like, on my phone, like, you need to hurry up. Okay, there's people waiting for me. People are getting aggy. Come they on. They do get aggy. But a lot, mainly 90% of them understand. They all know. Mm. They all got my back. But obviously, yeah. there are going to be some dickheads that just want to be horrible to you. As always. We'll, we'll, defi we'll definitely get onto that because I think that is just a whole other part of social media that, oh, you know, God, is, yeah. is unfortunately, the, you know, the negative part of social media. But yeah. I'm kind of curious to the messages you get with yeah. everything that you've kind of done so far, especially Eat With Eden. What's the best bit of feedback you've received so far? It's daily that I'll get messages from parents. So like a lot of them have sent me, I won't get emotional because that's cringy, <laughs> but like a lot of them have sent me pictures no. of their daughter before and then like their like their daughter at the beginning of lockdown because they've like developed an eating disorder or something right. and then them now watching my videos and like oh like it gives me chills and I'm just like what well, how because when the child's saying it the child was messaging mm. me saying all of this I'd be like sometimes you think oh, are you making that up like because mm. do you just want me to reply sort of thing whereas yeah, when, when, yeah. The, when the parent is saying it you know it's real you know especially when I mm. see them in real life like I went to surprise the girl the other day and um, she's been really bullied recently and she was getting her hair and makeup done for her birthday. So I, I went over there and I walked in and her parents just started crying and oh, they were God. hugging me and just like, it was such a connection. Like, I always say this, like you see someone like that's been in a movie and you love the character mm. they played. But for me, they see me and they know everything about me and like yeah. we've got a connection and that's just mm. so important. It kind so of is the new the new movie star though. I think obviously like, you know, TikTokers like yourself, you're so accessible mm. to especially the younger generation that do spend their evening sat scrolling through, you know, watching lives, watching videos. And yeah. they can feel so close to you because you, especially to you, because you are sat giving them that kind of one-on-one -on -one time when you're, ha when you're doing Eat With Eden, mm. you're asking what the guys are having for their tea. You're interacting with them. You know, it's, you're com completely breaking that kind of fourth wall and really having a chat with them. So it make, yeah. I guess it makes, you know, people feel really connected to you. But they hated that. When I went on the news, they hated, like they did a headline for me saying like TikTok star. And the, the, right. the people, like the older generation saw that. They were like, TikTok star, what is this? Like all of this oh, shit. And well, everyone said TikTok wasn't going to be anything when it, the older generation like still have no clue. But like even like some of us, we we didn't think TikTok was going to blow up as much as it is. People just yeah. need to chill TikTok and realize that like things are changing. Thing. I know. But that's, but that's the thing. Not only have you hit so many any kind of viewers across the UK and the world on TikTok, but then you went mainstream on TV, you know? How did that all happen? What the hell was that about? I was like, fuck it. Like I had BBC, which was pre-recorded. We met in a park. We had a wow. lovely chat. Um, I thought it was going to be about the Eat With Me series. She changed it and made the headline, I get death threats every day. I was like, okay, yeah. like, let's go with that. 
Like my tell uncle, us about tell us about that. So was that not like something that was actually discussed? They don't do that. My uncle works in the BBC, and he said to me like, "Be careful what they're going to make the headline." I was like, oh, "Shut up!" Like I'm going to be on TV, and he kept saying like, <laughs> "The BBC, babe." Yeah, he kept saying like, be, "Ask what the headline is." My mum was like, "Ask what the headline is," and I was in like the mood of like, "I'm going on the TV." Like I don't care what the mm, headline they're going to make the headline, but like it made you feel a bit. What's the opposite to empowered? Yeah, vulnerable. I mean, I'm vulnerable. Like, yeah, like I do. I don't care. Like I do get death threats every day, but it doesn't like, it's not like a main thing. I'd rather have spoken about my Eat With Me series, but, Mm. and that's what the interview was mainly about. So it was Mm. a little bit twisted for me and that wasn't a good experience. She was a lovely woman, but she was obviously, um, (laughs) but then. (laughs) Lucy's even laughing in the background. (laughs) I don't think I've ever heard Lucy actually laugh out loud. I'm like, you you do you, I love that. I was like, you do. No, you. yeah. Um, I mean, that that's the thing when you have these kind of, like, when you go through it, that must have been such a huge deal for you, yeah. obviously. Like, wow. Mm. Your videos on TikTok have ended up on the BBC News and then across every, you know, news outlet mm-hmm. out there, really. And then Sky News, they messaged me. They were lovely with me, but it was live. <laughs> and they were like, we want you to do it from your kitchen. And my mum was like, not the kitchen. She was like, Paul. My dad, she was like, we need to tidy the kitchen. Eden's going live on Sky News. <laughs> So then we all sat down, eight in the morning. I don't wake up till 11. So oh I was there God. at eight in the morning, like, fuck, you know. So like the producers are speaking to me on the iPad. They're like, okay, Eden, are you ready to go? You ready to go? We'll give you a countdown. And then it's like, breaking news. And then, so they wiped my thing and they were like, we're going to have to do it tomorrow. I was like, well, okay. So this is like journalism sort of thing. So I was like, okay. So I went on Stop. the next day. Yeah. And you could hear the... um news ladies talking as well she was like she was like oh what are we gonna do then and then it just cut out I was like oh no that is actually hilarious that is some Sky News tea I'm that really enjoying this Pete you would enjoy this as well I'm gonna have to tell that him afterwards is the Sky News tea. that and is then, wow yeah. and then I went on the next morning 8am like, <laughs> early one again cheers um <laughs> but yeah I went on spoke with her and she only cared about eat with me and she was really lovely she didn't even speak wow. about any negativity she was so so kind, um, mm. but it was live. And I was literally like, my jaw was going like this. I don't know what it was. I think it's because I had a Red Bull at 8 a.m. <laughs> but I was like, yeah. You're so, wide awake. Yeah. I was like, I love doing a with me and my follow like, <laughs> And my mum and dad were watching it in the living room so I could hear. And I was like, what the fuck? I was like, I, was like, I think I'm just going to go now. Like, <laughs> See you later. The interview's over, guys. No, I'm yeah. sure. I've, I've seen it. You absolutely killed it. But to go from, like, you, said, you know, your TikTok blowing up, your social media starting to blow up and, you know, really seeing these positive reactions from yeah. your fans and your followers to ending up on national news, like that is, well, world news, that is outstanding. Thank you. That must have it's felt like, like, like was, did it feel really, really surreal? Yeah. So like when she was setting like the BBC thing up, I was like, is this going on the TV? Because like she was setting up an iPhone and stuff everywhere. And I was no. like, I was like, where's the, where's the fucking, where's the cameraman? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, get them out here. It's Wait, funny. is that because it was COVID? Yeah, she came on her own. I was like, <laughs> I wanted my whole crew, guys. Where is the crew? What is this B-Tech news interview? (laughs) (laughs) It was lovely. And she was really chilled out. um, And that was really weird. The Sky News was really interesting because I found Mm. out all the background of what goes on. and like, Yeah, like producer, passed me on to another producer. I was like, like, fucking hell. I've never been (laughs) passed around by so many men in my life. I was like, keep it coming. (laughs) A fun day's work. That was a fun day's work, babes. (laughs) So going out on all these kind of news outlets must have been such a surreal moment. How did your parents feel? Because they've... I guess they probably don't. Do, do they understand like your journey no. and how much you've blown up? Like, talk no. me through that. <laughs> My dad goes the other day. I think you need to bring out a brand of scrunchies. <laughs> oh, to, that's to, so cute! And he said he got his. He went for an operation the other day, and I said the the nurse, his kids, were fans of me. Oh. And he said, "Yes, you know Eads Eads Harvey." <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "Yeah, she's got six point four billion. <laughs> and so for him the newspaper I was in and the news makes mm, sense to him mm. you know but social media is just not his thing but they were very worried about me obviously they, they've they seen like what social media and like exposure can do to people um, mm. so they were a little bit 
wary about it all and my mum was like that's why my mum was like careful of the headline what's the headline gonna be like yeah how are you gonna portray yourself and like as the days were coming up they were like you excited they dropped me to like the bbc thing and wow. they were like so proud of you they like waited for me and they're watching and they're really proud but yeah the newspaper makes, makes a bit more sense to my dad he's got a nokia this big no and he's he he says can i can you facetime me i'm like no not on that horn i'm afraid i can barely call you um (laughs) but yeah put a newspaper in front of him and my face on it big spread he's like oh that's his kind of thing yeah he understands that he understands the news um but they were really proud and really excited Mm. but yeah that makes a bit more sense to my dad he's like oh i watch this every day why's my daughter (laughs) (laughs) they must be so proud especially of eat with eden because like i say Mm. you've you've impacted so many people's lives and and have a positive impact on people's lives they must be so so proud they are to me it's just normal so for when i don't take compliments very well so when people say like oh you've changed my life like we someone stopped me the other day and they were like upset and they said like you've changed my life and i was like holding their hands i was so nice and my nephew's there he's like d they call me dd dd why is she saying that you changed her life (laughs) i'm like what do you say to that (laughs) what do i say like um (laughs) and she's the girl was like i just love your auntie and he's like why (laughs) That accent is the best accent I've ever heard. It's just like, really period. like, really like from his throat. Why is she saying you saved her life? <laughs> and then Callie, my niece, she's like, why don't they want a photo of me, Dee Dee? And I'm always like, sorry, please, please, can my niece come in the photo? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> so, that is literally tell. the cutest thing. I know. But it's so cute because my followers know them. So they're like, hi, Asa and Callie. And they're always like, wow. Oh my word, they must think it's crazy. It's crazy to think that like, you know, wherever TikTok's going to go, if it continues to be this, it is the most dominating platform right now out Mm. there. If it continues to, you know, smash boundaries and just blow people up like it kind of is doing, like where is it going to be when they grow up? Like, are they going to end up on TikTok? Like their cousin, Mm. like, is that going to happen? Or auntie, cousin, auntie? Auntie, auntie. I'm shit with knowing when, what niece and that all means. I get so worried. Like we, there's been a few times where we've been out and someone will, obviously they're excited, they've seen Mm. me and they too scared to come up to ask for a photo so they'll film. Mm. And when we're with the kids, I hate that. Yeah. I wouldn't care if it was just me and my sister or me and my mate, that's fine. It's a bit intrusive, isn't it? The kids didn't sign up to this. They have no idea what's going on. I don't know who that video is going to be sent to, their history. So I get Mm. very like panicky when the kids are on. That's the only time you'll see, you won't see like the positive chirpy Mm. side. Like Mm. just say, not not the kids. Like, because usually I pretend I haven't seen the person filming. But a lot of the time I'll turn around and say, not the kids. Yeah. And they'll, they're really kind and they'll just put their phone away. They'll be like, sorry. I'm like, it's fine. Like, ask me, oh, come up to me. I'm a lovely person, but not the kids. Mm. Like, that's the only time I'm a bit like, ooh. But that's the thing. Social media's kind of created this world where people think it's, you know, there's no boundaries. Yeah. There's no boundaries anymore. And, and I'm going to get onto that in a second when it comes mm-hmm. to comments and it comes to the way people speak to each other online but it yeah. is a scary thing to even you know put it as black and white as that is that people can come up to you in the street and kind of do what they want or they feel it's like they can crazy. and they feel like they know you yeah and it's it's uh, most people i meet are so lovely and mm. they're so kind whereas there are dickheads that are usually younger younger boys for me and they'll mm. be like oh you tiktok famous you tiktok and i hate that expression like who made that yeah 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 yeah. you never no one will ever say yeah i'm famous on tiktok i mean i'd love for you to turn around and say it to them just to piss them off after saying that to you like Like, yeah actually i am the most powerful (laughs) thing you can do is just like completely ignore because then like they look like an idiot yeah and then they'll probably rethink and be like why have i just said that Mm. so that's the only time it's usually younger boys Mm. and they'll just be really like um shouty and loud mm. and make you feel really embarrassed and but everyone else is so lovely but it's only then you're just like oh shut up mm. stupid prick nobody wants like shit shouted at like people shouting shit at them in the street like yeah. full stop especially women like no thank you whatsoever oh. but so when it comes to social media i know that you have experienced your know, negative feedback in the past yeah. especially when it comes to you know talking about mental health or eating disorders yeah. so tell me a little bit about that how did that all kind of come about and how does that make you feel when you are creating this what is great content that you know is helping people but unfortunately you're getting the this negative feedback also When I first started like blowing up and the negativity came through, I thought, I'm not used to this. Mm. What the fuck? Like, why does this person want to kill me? Because I'm trying to help people. Mm. Um, So you just got to think like, happy people won't hate. 
Mm. I would never, ever, ever sit somewhere and hate on someone, ever, whatever they've done, because that's not me as a person. But a lot of people have a lot of pain in their lives and Mm. they feel the need to do that. And so I couldn't come to terms with it for the first like two months. I thought, why do these people not like me? And I was trying to do everything that they were telling me to do so they'd like me. And getting into mental health is so detrimental Mm. because especially eating disorders, I've never struggled with an eating disorder. So I had to do a massive online course. Um, Right. I spent evenings and evenings on this online course searching up like what's right to say. So that's why now if you watch my eat with me videos, you'll rarely see me look at the camera because I've read up and you just need to put the least amount of pressure on someone. Um, That's why when when you watch other ones and they're like, take your first bite. Never, never yeah, patronise them. Yeah, Don't yeah, look at the camera, okay. just make it a normal thing. And that's happened with me in real life as well when I've met um, people in recovery. Mm. They'll eat with me if I'm not looking at them. And right. that's that's a massive thing. So I've done my research. I've done as much as I can. Like, mm. And I started it for those who are lonely, not just struggling to eat, but yeah. everyone's come yeah. who struggles to eat, which is amazing. But at the same time, you get a lot of people who are like, why are you talking about something you know nothing about? I'm not. I've never mm. sat there and been like, if you struggle with, if you have an yeah, ED, XYZ, like, you, yeah, yeah. I've never done that. I've just said, if you're lonely, come sit with me, let's eat together, what are you having? Um, mm. So I didn't understand why all these people were being so nasty to me and my family just said like, ignore it, ignore it. But it's so much easier said than done. Yeah. And anyone watching this, you know, exa- like, and you, if you do social media, you know, it's so much easier said than done. Whereas mm. now I'm really, as I said, into manifestation mm. and um, what is it called? Like, I'm very superstitious. And one of my friends said to me, if you ever go looking for hate again, or you ever read anything negative or respond to anything negative, your entire career will be over. And they said that to me. And since then, I've never, ever, ever looked at anything negative. Because then it stops you from doing it. In case, just in case. So it's been like four, five months now. Yeah, you see the odd comment, but Mm. like, it's just, it's embarrassing for them. It's not embarrassing Mm. for you, you know? Mm. And you, you still get that feeling to be like, oh, let me just, just reply to them and like argue because they're so wrong. Yeah. But at the same time, like they're not worth your energy. Not at all. You know? Because that's the it's thing, like I found on TikTok, like as a, as a personal user, like unlike any other platform, I know every single platform there is unfortunately, you know, online trolling, there's hate, there is negativity there. But mm. I feel, I don't know whether you feel the same, but on TikTok, it's, it's out of control. Like yeah. I can't believe some of the comments I read and like, whether it's on yeah, my own video, whether it's on someone else's video. And I'm just thinking, but I feel like it's become like a clout chasing thing. People people write nasty comments because they want X amount yeah. of likes and then X amount of likes mm. equate to a few more followers. And I just think, I, I completely agree with you. I think people that, a lot of people, not everybody that do write, you know, negative comments may be struggling, you know, something that we can't see, but I just can't believe as a platform how no. actually bad it is. That's what we always say, me and my sister Yaz always say like, it's not the comment itself, it's the likes on the mm. comment. We're like, they make it so green? much worse, like, yeah. So much worse, always. But like, at the same time, TikTok is the most toxic for negativity. It's amazing mm. for like exposure and like yeah. overnight fame. Mm. Um, but at the same time, it is so, so toxic. And they're trying to do what they can. They're trying to like be able to filter yeah. out comments and stuff like that but a lot of the time they won't catch them and yeah i've I've also found on tiktok if someone's self-conscious and they make that clear on a video people will big them up so much if someone's feeling themselves feel good they'll be brought down a peg and i think what where's the balance yeah let's look at what we're trying to do let's look what someone's achieved and let's just like all be like uh, can't we just be everyone be positive like honestly i know and i'm lucky with my fan base because if i get negative comments one yeah. like they they will all reply to them yeah. and like back me up and I'm so grateful to have that but a lot of people don't have that and that's mm. not fair for them and yeah it just and thinks. and this is the thing as well I know that you spoke recently on a video about your fans and you know them having your back them being there for you but I know that you actually spoke about how your fans have actually messaged you in the past or tagged you in the comments, like shown you the comments. And I know now yes. that you've set this boundary with yourself, like, yeah, well, I'm not going to look at them because, you know, X, Y, Z. Yeah. But if you're getting shown them, it's a bit like, <laughs> what do you do? And like, that's the oh, thing. Is, 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 I'm sure they're trying to be helpful, but really, mm. is it more hurtful? Ignorance is bliss. And I don't want these people that make 
horrible pages to even know that I even mm. I exist, mm. you know, and to have my followers like tagging me and being like, have you seen this? <laughs> like, obviously not. Tabitha underscore XO23. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, is it, why would I want to watch no, that? No, I wake up and see that today. No, yeah. They no. save, they save it. And then they'll send it to me on Instagram DMs. And I'm like, why would you? And I say to them kindly, I say like, I know you're looking out for me, but I don't yeah. want to see something like that. And if I looked up to someone and um, not, no, I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't. But the thing is, when I see other people I know or famous people getting hate, mm. no part of me thinks, oh, I just think, oh, like, fuck it. Like, I still love them. Do you know what I mean? Depending on what they've done, obviously. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it drives me absolutely fucking mental when they send me those screenshots and tag Mm. me in it because I don't want that person to have the upper hand to think, haha, so Eden's been tagged in it, she's going to see that. Because I just block. I've I've probably got more blocked than I do followers. It's crazy. And they hate that. They'll just keep making accounts, keep making accounts, and me and my sisters will just block, 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 block. It's mental. So message to anyone out there, let, let's not send that, obviously Ever. everyone's trying to do good, but let's not send that hate around because they don't deserve <laughs> the airtime, okay? No, that's like, it, it's they just don't. a no, like these haters don't deserve the airtime. Mm. One of the things we've noticed on TikTok, again, out of, you know, I think it does happen across all the kind of social media platforms, but TikTok especially is cancel culture. Everybody is so quick to, well, not everybody, but a lot of people are so quick to want to cancel somebody, Mm -hmm. sometimes over the slightest thing. Now, I know obviously across any social channels and whatever, there's scandals, there's these big things. And I'm not saying that cancel culture is right in whatever scenario, but it is has become such a huge thing. Like, what are your Mm -hmm. thoughts on cancel culture? It's a really difficult one, isn't it? Because most of the people that will say about this to someone and give them hate they've Mm. done the same thing they're just Mm. not in the public eye you know Mm. they have at the end of the day like if you want to be brutal they have yeah and a lot of people have done the same thing um and a lot of people just join the bandwagon and they're like yeah let's but then if that person was to die they would all put up posts and say oh like i loved her i love like where like it drives me mental I, i personally understand cancel culture if it's to do with racism or homophobia Mm. or something big but if it's like my mate went to dubai in the pandemic wrong but Mm. you're not why would like why are you telling her to kill herself why would she do that for getting on a plane exactly that that is where it it does go far too far i know it was wrong and we all spoke to her and we said like you shouldn't be doing this Mm. and she felt bad for it but she was getting death threats for getting on a fucking plane so then then, this is the thing that makes that person that makes you a bad person saying things like that i'm sorry like you can't tell someone to go and do it like it's horrific it's actually horrific i put on uh i put up a video yesterday surprising that girl that i was talking about earlier yeah and um i was so excited in the moment i was holding this massive balloon i had my phone and my mask in my hand so I didn't put my mask on going into the thing. And I know I should have. But I went in and she was like getting upset and I was giving her a cuddle and oh. everything. Hundreds of comments. Should have worn your mask. You were preaching about COVID. You're disgusting. I've lost respect for you. And I just think like that, like there are festivals where there's no mm. social distancing, no masks. Yeah. There's football hooligans. There's mm. pubs where they're not social distancing. No one's wearing their mask. And I'm trying to do a good thing for someone. Yeah. S- surprising them on their birthday. the be- Probably one of the best days of their life. Literally. And people ruin it like that. But there was millions of, hundreds of comments where it's people lovely, but you just got to sit back and think, is it that big of an issue? Do I need to write that mm. right now? Mm. No. Just be like, oh, she should have been wearing her mask. Go. Because I know that. But, I'm not an idiot. This is the thing as well. Like, say it to yourself. Like, I always say to people, like, yeah, no matter how nice you are or whatever, we can all say our own things in your own personal space, in your own home, in a room with your mates or whatever. But mm. why post on social media? Like, yeah. I, I really don't care about your opinion. Exactly. When, when it's negative, if it's positive about anything, I like it. But, mm. like, if it's going to be negative, like, just say it to your friend at home. Like, if, if, if that's what you've got to do, just yeah, don't like take sit, it to social sit media. Yeah, like, girls, have a bitch. Yeah, have a little bitch. Have a little bitch. Yeah. We all do that. Like, we're all like... Exactly, we're all bloody human. We're all yeah, human. But it's ridiculous. But anyway, you, most of the comments you get, I know, are really positive. And like oh, I yeah. say, you've grown this massive, massive fan base. And when it comes to Eat With Eden... I want to know what's kind of next. Like, are you going to carry on? I know that you're carrying it on right now, but we are starting to ease out of lockdown. So what's kind of your plans for Eat With Eden moving That's forward? That's where it's difficult for me because mm. everyone's like, oh, you've changed Eat With Eden. And it's like, 
I was in a lockdown when it began. So I, I the I world's was, changed. I, yeah, I was at home all the time. Now I'm back out <laughs> yeah. and I'm doing things. I always do eat with Eden, and yeah. wherever I am, I've done it in the middle of London, central London. I did it at the Sussex Exchange the other day. I'm really posh, prestige restaurant, and I was like, "You're right." I love that. So like, but at the same time, where I was at home and focused, I could sit there and take half an hour to caption my videos afterwards and sign yeah. and everything. Whereas when I'm out, I just want to get the video out there. Mm. and so I put a lot of pressure on myself I think oh I should be captioning this like for the hard of hearing community I think oh yeah. I should be captioning this but at the same time I don't want anyone to go without and I don't have half an hour spare it's right there to no do decisions. that decisions yeah, yeah yeah so it's really like a battle in my head of like do I just not post and eat with me tonight and then like mm. do one tomorrow but like I don't want anyone to feel left out so I will always do them I'm never going to stop doing them because I've built a community of people who rely on them I can't yeah. not do them. Um, and I enjoy them. Like, sometimes, don't get me wrong, sometimes I just want to chill out and eat my food. But other times <laughs> I think like, oh yeah, I, I've really missed them today. And like, I just want to sit down and speak to them and like read the comments whilst I'm eating afterwards. And yeah, but I'll never stop doing it. But I'd love to like um, work with loads of restaurants and like go in there mm. and actually like do something with them. That's um, cool. Yeah. But my friends are all supportive and my family's really supportive. So like, if we're in like a situation where they have to be there whilst I'm doing it, they'll always join in and they'll never like be like, oh, like cringe, like ever. I love and, that. I saw mm. I saw the one where your friend the other day was doing tequila shots with you and you gave her water. That's she a- <laughs> had not eaten for 48 hours and oh! she drank so much. Oh my goodness. We went that into That must a have pub- been a bad hangover. But no, she was absolutely fine. Went out the next day. But we honestly, we went to a club and the man was so nice he was like Eden would you like a table outside and Sophie goes fuck off it's fucking raining like, and I was like oh. and I was like I'm so sorry she was throwing up over the bar oh it was horrific but that's why I love her that's why you love her well, she, I don't she, drink I've never drunk in my life and I'm never got, ever um, never, I knew ever. you didn't drink but never ever like never I've wow. obviously like had a sip of my dad's cider once before but I've never ever wow. been drunk or anything yeah wow and you don't miss it when you're out with your friend who's clearly enjoying herself on the tequilas that puts me off. That makes me think I'm never right. Yep, <laughs> and have never. I'm doing that. I'm more. Fa- I'm fun anyway. Like, and you a lot definitely of the time are. Your energy's there anyway. People will be like, "Oh, what? You don't drink?" And I'm like, "No." And they're like, "Oh, boring." And then they'll be me the whole day. They'll be like, "Oh, you're actually really fun." Like, <laughs> you don't. Yeah. Need so it. I don't know what it's like. So I don't know what what I'm missing out on. Wow. Well, I mean, your liver must be thankful. I'm going to say that <laughs> yeah. because, yeah, I could do without the hangovers right now. But so from Eat With Eden, kind of everything that you've done so far on your journey, what do you think is like the biggest thing you've learned about yourself throughout this whole kind of crazy two years or whatever it's been? That I'm fucking strong. That I'm very, very strong. That's going to make me cry. Um, no, that I'm a very strong, resilient woman who doesn't need a man. Good and single happy successful doing it for you honey yeah i'm yes. like, i'm the only person i need in my life and yes. that's what i learned i spent so many of my younger years being like oh like why doesn't he want me like oh i need to chase mm. him i need to buy his love and then i'm just on my own i think i never needed them but i just didn't have that time away to actually do something for myself mm. and now it's all worked out very well i've been single for nearly two years and well, I didn't realise, you know, that that was kind of like a, a period you went through in your life. So I'm so glad you've got to this point and you are like, mm. yes, bitch, I'm doing it for me because that is what we all need to do yeah. in life. Like mm. at the end of the day, you don't need you don't need a man or you don't need a woman, whatever position you're in. Exactly. Um, and yeah, you just got to look after yourself. So I'm so glad that you've come to that. And yeah, you definitely are strong. Like you've created such, like I said before, you've created such an incredible platform for yourself and you are just smashing it right now. So congrats to you. <laughs> Loving it. I mean, I can't wait to keep watching you on TikTok. What's plans for kind of the future? Have you got plans, big dreams and plans for next? I have, my dear. I have indeed. We've got lots of exciting things now. But it's annoying, isn't it, when you work with someone? Can you tell us? No! And it's so fun. Why? Like, I'm not, like, going into, like, fucking, (laughs) I'm a celebrity. Do you know what I mean? Like, just, I've got events that I'm I'm not allowed to announce until they've posted. Oh. um, Which is annoying, because I'm going to Talk Fest in September, a massive TikTok festival. Oh, wow, amazing. Okay, so can people, can people buy tickets to go and see you there, or what's the kind of deal? Wow. Most of my meet and greet tickets have sold out, so we're just 
I did the virtual one in April and they sold out in a minute. So that is I'm just insane. hoping everyone gets, yeah, I re- just want, I will stand there for hours and hours to make sure everyone wow. gets to meet me. But um, yeah, that's one thing I'm allowed to talk about, which is the other stuff. Like, just fucking let me, you know what I mean? <laughs> just keep your eyes peeled, basically. Oh, that's so exciting. I can't wait to see. It. I mean, we might mm. have to go down, Amy. We're going to have to, we're going to, I'd like to go to a TikTok, ev- TikTok event, actually. I think that'd be really fun. We're, yeah, we might should. surprise you. We're going to be in the yeah. crowd, like, Hey, just turn up. <laughs> yeah, you should. You're allowed to. You're allowed to just just message them. I'm sure that like that you could get your own. Amy's nodding along. We are definitely we are definitely going to come and say hi if we can mm. do. That would be so much fun. But if you don't, if we don't, then you've got to come to PLT soon, please. Obviously, I'm there. I'm it's got to happen. Tell me a little bit. Tell me before you were telling me a cute thing about PLT. I want to hear it again for the recording. I'm making it shy. So <laughs> every interview I've ever done, whether it's a podcast, whether it's the news, whether it's radio, I've always said, they said like, what's your dream? Like, what would you love to do? And I said, I would love to collab in the future with PLT. That's my, that's my main, because they're the only style that's me. Like, because it's like classy, but it's also like cool, old, like that's just what got I'm Got a bit about, of everything, so. got a bit of everything. Got a bit of everything in well, there, babe, that's my... This is this is like our, you know, this is a this is a big thing. Was working together. Let's manifest the rest of it. I'm here for it. We're here for it in the room. We're here for. I can just see it like black with like green dragons, yes. like fire flames. Like it's just like it just needs to come. Like cargo trousers and just <laughs> ready. Wait, is the t-shirt you're wearing PLT? Yeah, honey. Kind of like this vibe. I really like this vibe. Yeah, but this would be black. Okay, right. Black for future black. reference. Let's Neon. only send Eden black, guys. Okay. <laughs> No, I love, I love green as well. That's why I'm happy I've got just black hair now because w- the greens would like contrast with other greens. Oh, Whereas yeah. I love wearing green. So now it's just like I can wear any color and it's like... Green is a vibe. Green is a mm. complete... It's the, it's the color of the summer too. Yeah, I love it. It definitely is. I love green. Now, finally, before we end the podcast, I wanted to yes. know what's kind of like the biggest thing that you'll take away as a person from everything you've kind of achieved so far. What is the biggest thing that you will take away from all of this that kind Will's, of greatness? Will Smith knows who I am. And we'll end the podcast there. It's fantastic. It. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's literally probably it. That no, that I, I think I would definitely it'd be the same. It's definitely a highlight. That is a humongous mm. highlight. I mean, yeah. Growing up with Will Smith, that's pretty damn big, babes. The biggest thing it's just I, I don't know, that I was just I'm okay alone. That's my main thing because I've really struggled with my mental health. And to know that I am fine alone now and nothing worries me and my anxieties are mm. low, like that's just the best thing for me. And I have the most amazing supporters and it just, it's all just not real. I just feel like I'm going to wake up there on my futon. <laughs> like, I've got this amazing bed here and I think that's going to disappear in my dream when I wake up. <laughs> and like everything around me, I'm just like, what will like pinch me constantly? I'm like, what? Like, and my sisters say that too. They're like, Eden, what is this life? Like, I don't. <laughs> we go places and they're like, yeah, just do a post. Everything's free. We're like, what? <laughs> We're free. Huh? Let's keep on coming. <laughs> it's just amazing. But we are so grateful for it. And it's Aww. not just like, it's not like expected ever. It's just all amazing. And we're all so grateful. Oh, well, I'm so glad to see you so happy and you're completely glowing and killing it right now. So I cannot Thank wait you, to see what you do next and what comes in store for the future. And definitely we'll see you in this HQ soon, please, girl, okay? You will. Thank you so, so much for joining us on PLT Podcast. Honestly, you're an inspiration. Love it with Eden. We're going to continue watching it and supporting you here from PLT. And hopefully, like I say, we'll see you soon. I love you. Thank Woo, you. Thanks, babe. See you soon, everybody. Bye. Oh, wait, I've got to do an outro. <laughs> I forgot my outro. <laughs> Guys, that was the PLT podcast with the amazing Eden Harvey. If you have enjoyed this podcast, make sure to leave us a little review and as always, subscribe. And don't forget to go and check out our brand new Instagram at the PLT podcast. We'll see you next week. Woo! Bye! <laughs>